Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is out, but how does the campaign run across the various consoles? So as we know, Call of Duty has been released and this is going to be the biggest game of the year in terms of the amount of people playing and the amount of copies sold as it generally is every year. But Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, I think is going to be bigger than all of them. We're already seeing numbers on Steam with the concurrent number being around 238,000 people shattering records from previous concurrent numbers when it comes to Call of Duty on Steam. But the game is also out on the consoles, of course, and there are going to be a ton of people jumping in. And we have some comparisons here for the campaign when it comes to the Xbox Series S, X, and the PlayStation 5. Now, this is another analysis from L and Elisa DeBits. They put out their video analysis looking at the performance and the resolutions and everything of the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 campaign. I'm sure a multiplayer comparison will be coming out soon, and we'll also take a look at that. But here is the gist of it. You could say the Xbox Series X is the best place to play Call of Duty. It beats the PlayStation 5 at 120 frames per second. PlayStation 5 we know has the marketing rights for Call of Duty. We've seen a lot of stuff that has, I would say, been bad for the game as an entire community because of the marketing rights with PlayStation 5. Things like the exclusive content on the console, things like the cross-play toggle that isn't available on console for the Xbox Series consoles and on PC. And then we are also seeing weird things where they accidentally misprinted the back of the case on the Xbox version of the game where it says this as you can see the best selling franchise on Xbox and then they did the French translation and they accidentally said PlayStation so lots of weird stuff happening here and another thing to look at when it comes to Call of Duty and the PlayStation marketing rights is the fact that they are actually marketing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on the boxes for PlayStation 5 there's a bundle where you actually get the game and that's a huge way to push consoles and going forward, if the Activision Blizzard deal does go through, Xbox is going to be able to use that type of marketing, which I think is going to be huge for pushing forward the Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X. But back to the campaign and how it's running. What are the results? What makes the Series X the best place to play the campaign based off of L Annalise at the Bits comparison? So first of all, on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, you get access to 4K 60 FPS as a baseline. And this is achieved through temporal upscaling. So it is not actually a native resolution, but it is this feature that they use in order to give you a smooth experience in 4K. Now, this is something that I find very interesting when it comes to these consoles. People could look at this and say that they are using something like temporal upscaling and not giving the best possible native resolution that they could with 4K, but I've played this game through the campaign twice, played it on the Xbox Series X and played it on the Xbox Series S, and whatever they are doing, Whatever optimizations they have done, the game looks absolutely stunning. One of the best games I've seen in terms of graphics out on these consoles right now in this generation so far. And this is where I come back to always, the developers have the ability to do stuff like this, to give us these products that run and look great, even if the native resolution isn't 4K, even if they have to use things like temporal upscaling. Now at 60 FPS, the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 pretty much have a flat line. So 60 FPS locked, great experience on both. And then we get over to the 1440p 120 FPS mode, which is where there is a bigger gap between the Series X and the PlayStation 5. It is a mode that a lot of people are going to want to utilize, especially if they are playing these consoles on a gaming monitor that is 144 hertz or something. They're gonna wanna use that 120 FPS mode because it looks great and then you get the better performance compared to the, the 60 FPS. And it says here, the Xbox Series X largely maintains a full 120 FPS with small dips of five frames or less, while the PlayStation 5 slides as far as the low 90 FPS range. So there is a pretty big gap there as to which console is performing better. It's another game where the Series X is outperforming the PlayStation 5, something that common sense would kick in and say it makes sense because it is a more powerful console and developers if they're able to utilize the power of the Series X, it should technically be running most third-party games better than the PlayStation 5. And then we have the little console that can, and that is the Xbox Series S. I mean, it's a $300 console. We always talk about this and what it outputs, especially for games like Call of Duty is extremely, extremely impressive in my opinion. 
I play through the campaign, some parts of it as well on the Xbox Series S, and it, I've been using my Series S a lot for multiplayer on my gaming monitor, and it just runs absolutely great, having a great time playing Call of Duty on the console. And it says here that it offers 1440p 60 FPS mode, which is mostly consistent with brief hiccups. So you're getting 1440p output at 60F. That is essentially smooth throughout your entire experience, which I think is extremely impressive, especially with the graphics of this game. And then a 1080p mode with a performance mode, which ranges from 90 FPS down to 60 FPS. Now there is that 120 FPS toggle on the Xbox Series S version of the game. You go in, and I wonder if this is going to mean that with multiplayer, once someone does a test for it, that it will be closer to 120 FPS. I hope it is that. But either way, 90 FPS down to 60, fluctuating between that on a $300 console is, is a great value for what we're getting out of the Xbox Series S. And then when it comes to the image quality, they pretty much say there is no real difference between them. Both the X and the PS5 run at near ultra settings. And even the Series S looks pretty good with only small clawbacks to lighting and other effects. Like I said, I've played the campaign on the Series X and the Xbox Series S. It looks great on both consoles. So if you're wondering whether you need to upgrade to the Series X to get the best experience for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, from my experience so far, from what I've played both single player and multiplayer, I would say you're in a very good spot with this game and the Xbox Series S. And I mean, historically, Call of Duty has always had good performance on the consoles with the X and the S and the PS5. And it's continuing here with Modern Warfare 2, which is just an absolutely massive game. And it is a lot of fun. It isn't perfect. There's a lot of things they still need to improve on with the game. Like I was looking for like a battle record to see what my KD was. And I don't even think they have that in the game yet. But overall, if you're just jumping into the game, it is a ton of fun. And it's bigger than any Call of Duty we've seen in a while. And I think that is going to be huge going forward, especially if they take a year off from releasing the next Call of Duty. But that's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts on this. What do you think about the performance comparisons? Where are you playing Call of Duty? Are you enjoying the game? Are you disliking the game? Let me know all that stuff in the comments below. Have a great Halloween. Thank you for watching. And I will catch you guys in the next video.